Uh-oh. This doesn't sound too good. Commodore is best known for the PET 2001, the C64 and later the C128. CBM also stepped into production of IBM compatibles, of which I had salvaged this 286 laptop. The only question is, can I fix it? Retro computing is the use of older computer hardware and software in modern times. I'm the vintage collector and these are my stories. To dismantle the 286LT we have to start from the bottom and remove all screws. On the upper side you simply slide out the battery. Underneath a cover piece we find a small battery compartment with rechargeable AA sized 3.6V cell. It surely depleted, caused as well the initial startup errors about the lost configuration data. There are several screws to be removed from this side. Next I slide out the keyboard. Be gentle here as there's two flat band cables underneath. Don't just rip it apart. When you lift up the display unit you'll see a lot of additional cabling. I use some spots and tweezers to unplug all the cables. Now with the base unit standalone I thought that I could simply dismount a floppy drive. Unfortunately it seems that it's retained with screws from the underside of the main board. To remove the main board I had also to remove the retainers which are accessible behind four small screw holes from the underside. But luckily that's not that worse as during my initial startup test I heard clickering noises from that hard drive anyway so it's most likely broken as well. Now with the hard drive being removed I can flip the main board upside down and remove the 3.5 inch floppy drive. The drive is also enclosed by transparent plastics housing that I have to remove as well. Only now I can remove the top cover to look at the inside. Oh boy, here I check the elasticity of the rubber belt which is totally worn down. I will take a further step to remove the front drive bezel, this will help me surely later on. I use some tweezers to release the rubber belt from the main driver coil, then I can easily pull it out from the other side. If you need to find a replacement rubber belt, try on eBay and search for a Teak 063-U floppy drive. And here's the original belt side by side with the replacement. See how much larger it has become over the years. No wonder we heard these funny noises in the beginning as the motor could not deliver any traction. To mount the new rubber belt I simply slide it in from the front loading side. I can then easily put it in place using tweezers through the existing openings so I don't have to furtherly dismantle the drive case. So with this done I can now begin to reassemble the laptop again. First I mount back the floppy drive so I can put the mainboard back into the base unit. Then I reconnect all the cabling from the display unit. I guess I dismantle it in the wrong sequence to begin with. This time over I'll just fixate the display right away both from the front and from the back side so things will already hold together. And whoa, it still powers on, which is a good sign. I quickly go into the system BIOS and set the correct values for the 3.5 inch floppy drive. Will it boot? Hell yeah, it does boot, wonderful. Apparently my DOS setup disk complains about a missing hard drive, but that's fine. I'm about to fix that in a moment. <laughs> Now if you watch me closely, you see me mounting a compact flash to IDE adapter. I know, I know, purists will blame me for not adding a proper hard drive here. 
but I can live with this shame. First, you have to come by any such hard drive, and second, it will anyway still be a used hard drive, you know nothing about how long it will last. And thirdly, most vintage hard drives have supercalifragilistic expialidocious prices. Oh my, did I really just say that? Anyways, I insert a 16 megabytes compact flash card. That's not the correct size, as this laptop features a 20 megabytes hard drive. Still, it's about period accurate. Next up is the replacement of the AA sized cell, which gives the battery backup to the CMOS RAM. I will simply remove the cable clips and resolder them to a replacement cell. The battery compartment cover has this rubber foam on it, which dissolved over the years. It's so bad that I can literally peel it off with my fingers. I won't put any replacement in place as it's somewhat pointless. Now I can slide the battery pack back in and also mount the backside connectors cover diesel. Last but not least, I put the three screws in place which fixates the keyboard and I also glue the four covers in place for the hard drive screw holes. And now, finally, the power on test that should bring everything back to life. I had previously already configured the hard drive parameters in the BIOS. Remember, I used the 16 MB compact flash card to which my settings of 306 cylinders, 4 heads and 25 sectors per track played out quite nicely. Now I will finally install a period accurate MS-DOS 4.0 which will greet me after the final reboot with the classic MS-DOS shell. And this concludes my repair of the Commodore C286LT. It needed some love, but all in all this was just a neat repair without too many pitfalls. If you enjoyed this video then give me a thumbs up. See you next time.